Hey there riders, Moto Journo Chris, and I have got the Tenray 700, which is basically Yamaha's newest kind of offering in that adventure, adventure sport, I would even go far as to say, but probably adventure touring for most people. And it is a really, really cool bike. I'm gonna have a full review up shortly, but I thought I'd go over the features to start off with. Now this bike is 17,149, on the road right away. So that's a pretty competitive price for an adventure touring motorcycle, even in that 700cc kind of category. Obviously, a lot of the machines now are coming out with huge amounts of electronics, but the price tags on those machines is, you know, pretty eye-watering in a lot of cases. And I have to say, the MT-07 power plant in this, this is the 689cc version. It's not the restricted lambs version. So it's about 74 horsepower claimed output and you don't need the electronic system. Obviously, it's a really nice power plant. There's a reason it's in the MT-07, the XSR 700, the Tracer 700, the Tenray 700 now. You know, really, really flexible, nice all-round power plant. Liquid cooled, four-stroke, double overhead cam. It's just a really, really nice power plant that is really flexible and has been tuned for this specific use. Yamaha do mention the chassis on this machine is all new. So it's got its own uh, diamond style frame with removable down loops, which you can see here. Uh, so it's an all new system that's designed specifically for off-road use. And it is designed for some quite serious off-road use. So it's worth keeping that in mind. You've got some great Brembo brakes here on the front. So you've got dual disc brakes, 282 mil, which I think is the same as the Tracer 700, but they've got much beefier Brembo brakes on them. You've got quite a, quite a small screen here, which does offer reasonable wind protection. You've got four LED lights, which is kind of, you know, a bit alien-esque, uh, quite a cool feature. Obviously quite simple bodywork, as you will see here. You've got, you know, great mirrors for vision, quite wide and reasonably tall bars, I guess you'd say. And you've got, you know, very basic hand guards. You'd probably want to replace those with some bike busters if you're getting really serious. Uh, adjustable brake lever, non-adjustable clutch lever, very simple LCD display. I'll put a picture up of that, but it does the job. And without heaps of electronics, why would you need any more? Let's keep it simple, rubber mounted. So obviously when you're riding in the real rough stuff, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, you've got your quite grippy pegs there. There are rubber inserts for when you're riding on the road so your feet don't get caught up in them. Uh, but generally speaking, nice and grippy and not overly grippy, I guess I'd also say. They're not too spiky. So good grip in most conditions, but still good for general use. Obviously, one of the big things compared to like an off-road bike is the level of comfort offered by this is really good. Uh, I think Yamaha Australia's 880 mil seat height. Uh, you can bring that all the way down to 845 with a lowering link and with the lower seat height. The lower seat height, I think, saves about 7 mil, so not a huge difference. But it's a compact seat and it's quite narrow but very comfortable. I'm really quite impressed with the seat. And there's a reasonable spot for a pillion on the back. Obviously, less of an issue for going off-road, but for a bit of touring, I think this is going to cover all the bases. It's got a really nice exhaust note. It's got a little bit of a burble, nice exhaust note. Obviously, it's, you know, a standard exhaust. It's not the most amazing looking. They probably want you to buy the Acro that's offered for about 1150 bucks, and that's gonna sound even nicer, but it's got a nice engine noise, a nice engine burble, and it's got a nice little burble from the exhaust as well. So I really like that. I was quite impressed by that. Uh, on the rear 245 mil rotor with, again, a Brembo caliper, I'll talk in detail about how these perform in my full review, so stay tuned for that. Um, a nice kind of quite compact off-road style tail, so that's a nice feature. It does have quite a large fender and it's got traditional style indicators. You might want to put on some nice Yamaha LED indicators to replace those to kind of swish it up a bit, but you know, maybe not necessary. It's got the optional accessory crash plate. It's got a headlight protector on it as well, and it's just got a tank protector there. So just a few minimal mods that are gonna help in your general conditions. Uh, Yamaha are calling this the light, uh, light off-road kind of setup with those additions. And I'll talk about the other accessories that are available another time, because there's a huge list to take it, you know, to another level, I guess you'd say. Other things worth noting, 21 inch front, a 18 inch rear these are clad in the absolute standard 
Pirelli Scorpion Rally STR tire. That's what it comes fitted with standard. Uh, you do need to run tubes. These are not tubeless spoked wheels, uh, but you've got spoked wheels because again, it is, you know, a proper adventure motorcycle. We've seen some people calling their motorcycles adventure motorcycles, uh, you know, with standard cast wheels. And this obviously is a far more serious option. On the suspension side of things, you've got KYB front and rear. You've got a preload and rebound adjustable rear with a remote preload adjustable. Uh, very, very easy to do on the move, you know, if you need to just kind of work with your settings a little bit. On the front, you've got fully adjustable KYB, 43 millimeter forks, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, so obviously you've got plenty of adjustability there and it's quite a high spec suspension system. I guess it's normal for the kind of more off-road style bikes. Like if you're looking at the WR250R, which is a much, you know, lower power, more basic option, but it's still got quite high specification suspension. You're seeing the same thing on the Tenre here. So that's my first look at the Tenre 700. I'm really, really impressed. It's a bike which has really captured my imagination. It's one of the few bikes in recent years that I've actually really wanted to go out and buy one. Uh, even trading in my Daytona, which says a lot, I didn't think I'd ever really want to replace the Daytona with anything, but there you go. There's a full review on the way. So if you've got any questions you'd like covered in the review, let me know below in the comments. Don't forget to sub, hit that notification bell. I'm kind of melting here. So I'm going to get out of the sun and get moving again for a bit of airflow. Stay safe out there on two wheels and thanks for watching.